I researched the band they were talking about and decided tonight will be the night that I spread my seed. <laughs> I traveled 500 miles to give you my seed. Hello friends and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise swearsies, it's just a fact. And it's totally science, go ahead, look it up, thanks so much. We are making our return to incel tier today. I know, I know, it takes a little bit more of my humanity every single time I do it, but people seem to like that. Why not sell parts of yourself if they are fully monetizable? That's all I'm saying. This is hustle culture, son. <laughs> you have to monetize every moment of your day. Don't sit back and relax for a minute. Unless you're watching this video, then feel free to kick back and relax for as long as the video lasts. Maybe even click another video. But before I promote that, let's knock this one out. <laughs> let's jump on into it and see how it goes. I don't even know what to say. Hello, I'm an incel and want to ask you, why did you transition? Isn't it easy mode being a woman? See, this is an incel who's exploring the incel to trans pipeline, which is something that we might cover in a future video. I found like this hundred page document, which I'm pretty sure is mostly just propaganda, but... I can't really think of another purpose for the incels who refuse to find purpose for themselves, so sure, why not? Try it out! And indeed, that would have made the perfect response. Like, yeah, if you think it's easy mode, do it on easy mode. <laughs> why not change gears? Anyway. Mister, I, I don't get matches on Tinder because of my looks and, and height. Oh, just the picture alone. He looks like a grease ball. <laughs> Here comes a grease ball! His hair's kind of fluffy there, but that's because he just took a shower for the first time in three months. But really, it's not even about looks, so so let's not even delve that deep. Let's take a look inside his mind, how he chooses to present himself to other people. <laughs> I'm just trying to marry someone before I turn 30, so I don't snap and change someone in my basement for intimate satisfaction and reproduction. Dude, that is the creepiest sentence you could possibly utter. What? What the hell is wrong with you? Uh, is it like a funny haha -ha dark joke? No, I don't think it is. This is an announcement of his intentions. Uh, huge plus if you're a virgin because you have the lowest rates of divorce. Yeah, high five, bro. <laughs> you know, people in relationships have the most intimate times, and I am one horny mother. <laughs> uh, yes, surely. Have you ever been in a relationship at all? Was he just reading an issue of Cosmopolitan? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wish we could kick all these illegal immigrants out of this goddamn country. I'm pretty sure that's what ICE is for. <laughs> They're not doing a great job. But I don't know, what else can you do? Police on every corner? Although I will say, deport the ones that commit crime. Alright, I'm not gonna get into it. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna wind it back. I see what you're doing there, incel. And I ain't falling for it today. The one function that a profile like this can provide is that it's it's really good for contrast, you know? Like if a chick's actually reading bios and stuff and she flips to this dude, she's like, nah, I don't want that. And then your your profile pops up and she's like, actually, compared to that mess I just witnessed, <laughs> I'll give this one a chance. So maybe he's performing a public service out here. He does have all his red flags on full display. If he does get in a relationship, he's, he's gonna find someone more toxic than he is. <laughs> it could be interesting. <laughs> uh, uh, but I won't worry about too much about it. Good luck out there, fellow. Maybe rework the bio. And we're on to the next. Committed male-male friendship. Committed in what way? <laughs> I feel the need to ask. I don't know, man. Seems kinda gay to me. I am a 100% straight guy who's no longer interested in dating women. <laughs> oh, cool. What up? We're three cool guys looking for other cool guys who want to hang out in our party mansion. Sounds a little gay. Modern women are lazy and selfish and have no interest in serving their man. 
Well, you see, the problem there is that she needs to have a man that's worth serving. <laughs> Or yes, she does get sort of lazy and selfish and look around and think she could do better. It's up to you to not let that happen. To retain their attention. If you really give half of a shit about him, which uh, presumably this guy doesn't. This whole life thing, he's in it for himself. For sure. <laughs> uh, but let's hear his proposal out anyways. What I'm proposing is a new type of relationship. Not a sexual or romantic relationship. Instead, it's like a committed male-male friendship with docking. You gotta have docking, bro. <laughs> or else... <laughs> I'm sorry to the people who don't yet know what docking is. Really, I shouldn't even joke about it because male-male friendships have become like such a, a homoerotic thing. Anytime you see it, it's like, there's gay overtones. It's like, dude, can't two people just be, like, the best of bros? Is that so far outside the realm of possibility? <laughs> I guess it is. But, you know, because you guys are so close, uh, some people are gonna want to ship it anyways. Good example of that was the Love Dumpster fan fiction between Ramtide and I. Is that Patreon only? I think it's Patreon only now. It's juicy. <laughs> it's nasty. Uh... But do sign up on Patreon or YouTube memberships if you want to have a look. Anyway, male-male friendship, great. Why would I want to spend my free time being dragged around the mall <laughs> or go on endless shopping trips when I could be going fishing and hunting and hanging out with my closest buddies? My buddy and I are both single and share a place together. Nah, nah, you're just trying to invite me over thinking you're gonna double up on me, ain't ya? <laughs> I'm not your friend, buddy! Uh, personally, uh, dragged around the mall, it's not so bad if you got some cash to splash. A little retail therapy, it's fun for the whole family! <laughs> uh, but yeah, we gotta go out in the woods and do man things! I enjoy man things just as much as the next person, but I don't specifically need another single dude to come out into the woods with me. It's going a little bit broke back, ain't it? <laughs> and maybe all that's going against what I just said about, you know, being the best of bros. But who cares, because it's funnier this way. <laughs> we live in separate rooms, like roommates, but still do fun stuff together every week. No women are allowed to come over. So you guys are just gonna be single forever? <laughs> Is he gonna give you the silent treatment if you invite over a female friend? He's like, we said no women. I don't understand. <laughs> we play COD, drink yingling, and are planning a week-long fishing trip for this summer. Just guys hanging out with dudes. Not a woman in sight. <laughs> cool. I mean, you, you could have a lot of fun with the boys in the woods. But at a certain point, don't you dare tell me that you don't want to walk through that door, come home to your woman, throw a, a venison on the table. She freaks out because you got blood everywhere, so you just roar like a barbarian. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what some time in the wood with the boys will do with you. <laughs> uh, I haven't been in a relationship with a woman in over three years, and I'm the happiest I've ever been. It sounds more like a MGTOW thing. I think it's just something that already exists, except you want to be codependent with this roommate buddy of yours for whatever reason. <laughs> you feel the need to justify it, to give it a name. But we already have a name for it. You're, you're a dude who wants to kiss his best male friend on the lips. You could go ahead. You could, you could do it. Try it out, you know? But keep this shit off Twitter. Twitter should be reserved for high caliber posts. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the next one. Oh, this is sure to be horrifying. Uh, a celibate's ideal society. Someone said, we can't shackle the intimate culture anymore. And this cell says, yes, we can. And we shall. In a Marxist, Rogerist, Freudless society. <laughs> Who? Uh, Rogerist. <laughs> Dude, have you heard the Roger Manifesto? I'm pretty sure it's compulsory listening for the channel at this point. <laughs> and yeah, he gets into it a little bit, but to take his rough failed outline and try and build a political belief structure around it, it's just... 
Ah, <laughs> uh, that is rich. <laughs> rich and creamy. Psych! It's actually a foul soup! <laughs> Uh, uh, one. Intimacy will be illegal. That's just gonna make it even more fun, don't you understand? <laughs> uh, two. Foids will be put in a coma and sent to underground breeding barns staffed by robot nurses where no man ever enters. Holy hell, man, you're doing the most to, to not solve the whole problem that we're having here. <laughs> uh, why Why are the nurses all robots? Where are these robots coming from? Some incels might have some brains, but like they don't have the stick-to-itiveness to learn how to build an entire robot that can like medically care for a human. <laughs> uh, that's insane. If they had that type of gumption, then they would have gone somewhere in the world and not been an incel. But they gave up. They gave up on everything they ever tried and settled for good enough. Never settle for good enough. Anyway, <laughs> rule number three. Simps will be shot on sight with a camcorder. But I don't think they really mean with a camcorder. How would simps even exist in this fictional world on top of that? <laughs> like, do, do they know what a woman is? Or is it like a, a highly kept secret? Rule number four! All men have the opportunity to reproduce at least once with a 9 plus out of 10 Stacy. Oh, using IVF plus genetic engineering if need be. <laughs> uh, where are we getting all these Stacys? Rule number five, if a man meets all the requirements, mentally healthy, etc., he will be allowed to raise his sons. Only his sons. And you're gonna do this as a single father? <laughs> the person who couldn't even pull a chick on his own without the government stepping in? <laughs> okay, good luck. Six, if a guy is mentally unstable, but otherwise contributes to society, he may outsource the raising of his sons to brothers, friends, uncles, etc. How are we determining who's mentally unstable in a cell society? <laughs> uh, I think it's just basically a, a blanket thing. And at that point, all the brothers and friends and uncles are also unstable. It's not gonna work. <laughs> uh, rule number seven. Ultimately, philosophically gifted gentlemen may apply to be a preceptor and gets paid to raise and educate kids. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> uh, rule number eight. Stacy Foyds never leave the barns and are bred as much as their body allows. Yes, in Minecraft. <laughs> Do we not do this right now? Uh, that's disgusting. You can't live a normal life locked in a pen. The reason that Chad's and Stacy's are so attractive is because they carry on with a normal life. So what happens when the Stacy's become ugly? <laughs> uh, the quote unquote point continues. <laughs> The more children a 10 out of 10 Stacy produces, the less demand there is for sub-10 Stacys. How do you even judge? You're like, <laughs> he's like, damn, that's a sexy baby. <laughs> what? No, no, all right. I know that sounds bad. I don't want to go there. You know what? There's a reason I stopped coming here. It just brings out the worst. <laughs> Uh, point number nine. Sub nine, non Stacy Foids are turned into pet food immediately. <laughs> As are Stacy's once their reproductive usefulness is depleted. Into pet food? <laughs> You're gonna feed your pets people? <laughs> this will just be like a swarm of chaos. Every man and their sons humping a mattress to make foul soup while their pit bull attacks the neighbor's kids. The Stacys all locked down there in the barns, hear all this commotion going on up above, and then suddenly, uh, after a couple days, the lights turn out. They haven't heard anything for 48 hours. Nobody's come to check on them. It's now time for them to break out. 
Because they're strong, independent women. They don't need no man. <laughs> That'd be like a wonderful flip reversal. Would I watch that movie? Probably not, because it'd suck. Anyway, here's the difference between a, a lonely guy and the cell. Just a lone guy. I'm in a bad pickle at the moment. Alone, reaching 30, unattractive, and I haven't found love. Maybe I just have low self-esteem. I hope I can find worth in myself. I I don't want to hate anybody or anything, man. I, I just want to be worth something good, I guess. And there you have cut me to the quick, sir. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I hardly identify with just about every word of that. Not alone. Definitely found love. Thank goodness for that. Yeah, the low self-esteem, the imposter syndrome. Just wanting to be worth something good. <laughs> uh, that's all I've ever wanted. The fact that this many people come along on the ride with me every single day is proof that they want something good too. But yeah, I don't know if any of us know how to go about it, necessarily. <laughs> so, what do we do about that? You do what you can. On the flip side of Lonely Guy, we have the Lone Cell. Voids keep treating us like untouchables! Gay people are just closeted chatted, Tess! I don't know what that is. <laughs> Blacks are stealing our women! And this world makes me want to be a rope cell! Foids! We demand your juices now! Yeah, I'm sure that'll work. <laughs> just keep whining. Everything that you experience is just a problem with the world because it couldn't possibly be a problem within yourself. <laughs> uh, one of these person is, is destined for success. The other person, yeah, they're gonna cope and mauled until they boil away and evaporate. The world won't even know that they're here. The world won't even know that they're gone. That's what bitterness will do to you, man. So always keep yes in your heart and know that it's always darkest before the dawn. Lone guy, he's not gonna be alone forever. Don't worry. Reaching 30, that means he's young. It's, you're gonna be fine. You're worth something good already. As for our lone cell, well, I don't think I have the equipment on hand to treat you <laughs> in the way that you need to be treated. Which basically just means that we're we're low on ammo at the moment, but we do have some big heavy steel toe boots. <laughs> we can show you those if you want. <laughs> Anyways, yes, bitterness, the defining trait of the cell. You gotta get past that first, my dude. <laughs> we're moving on. I just wanted to ask about roller coasters. <laughs> on r slash as reddit from an autistic person when people scream on roller coasters are you being genuine with it or are you just doing it because you're quote unquote supposed to there was a time that it was genuine now i just do it because i can supposed to is a really strange way to put it i guess to fit in with the crowd or whatever but uh it's not compulsory so <laughs> don't worry about it uh, the response to it is absolutely unhinged from this guy, though. <laughs> so it seems females in their teens yell out to be viewed as damsels in distress. <laughs> yeah, the damsels riding roller coasters. <laughs> <laughs> to try and attract a spouse. Uh, some others do it just because of the commotion. Yeah, I'm sort of a fan of the commotion, but how are you attracting a spouse on a roller coaster? <laughs> uh, it's sort of just a, a really fast flash of color and loud sounds. And then you get off and you look at the person next to you and you're like, we, we've had a really close bonding experience. Will you marry me? And she's like, ew, I'd rather die. <laughs> and so this guy has a lot of baggage. That's why he's on Reddit ranting about it. You didn't know the whole backstory, but now that you do, it's still pretty pathetic, isn't it? <laughs> uh, let's move on. Another classic for you. Oh, wonderful. I'm a big fan of the classics, you know? Your profile reeks of neckbeard cell energy. No ep, no beard here. I also own my own home, have a paid off car. No female anywhere around. <laughs> Uh, the last part's not quite the flex you think it is. But it is good that you have a paid-off home. It is, it's great that you have one singular paid-off car. <laughs> You're doing just fine. 
It only gets really weird when you announce to everybody else that you're doing just fine. Because we can all see pretty clearly that means that you're not doing just fine. <laughs> hey, I'm confident that had I wasted time acquiring Punani, I wouldn't have what I do. Or I would have lost half of more of it in a divorce. <laughs> no, thank you. How the f*** do you split a f***ing car, you dummy? With a fucking chainsaw? Yeah, might as well not even try because these things could have happened. Might as well just stop trying because it seems kind of hard and I have a made-up scenario in my head. <laughs> uh, the original tweeter responds and says, If that's your view on women, then it's no wonder why nobody wants you. Damn, <laughs> some smackdown. Oh, plenty of pride, but none have succeeded. Yes, he's very picky, this Rick Bonath, you see? He's got a paid off car, don't you know? <laughs> Modern Western women are horrible human beings. They relentlessly practice hypergamy while men settle down out of necessity. <laughs> I wasn't interested in playing that game at all. Perhaps once I've encapsulated my retirement fund, maybe. Yeah. And she's still going to come in and take half, theoretically. What changes between now and then, except that you have more shit for her to take half of? Does that make any sense at all? <laughs> You're just going to be a relentlessly lonely human being? Because that's easier than taking a chance on someone else. Taking a chance on yourself. No, no. Surely we got to just go on Twitter and tell everybody else how cool we are. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really weird way to go through life, but you seem to have made a choice. Got your little paid for blue check mark and everything. Me too, actually. Go follow me on Twitter at Dayton Does if you would. Theoretically, the Twitter's supposed to enable me to get out there and farm some fresh cringe for myself, but I don't know. Stuff like this, it really makes my bones hurt. <laughs> so we'll move along. This poster says, I met a wild incel. Honestly, yeah. A lot of them pretty wild, but <laughs> why don't you tell me about it? They decide to DM OP a wiki article about scientific black pill. Not from like the actual Wikipedia, but you know, the incels wiki. <laughs> you can take that seriously. They got their citations on point. Take that to the bank. <laughs> Here's why height. And other things are important for cells. Actually, only women makes it worse. But I'm sure you won't understand us. And you will just support women because you are Chad Light. Which means you can get Foids easily. <laughs> uh... <laughs> What the hell is even that? I'm five foot four and women hate just because of my height. And I will make them pay for it soon. Well, that last sentence is really ominous. Did we need to take it in that direction? <laughs> uh, tell me more about me. What makes me Chad Light? The fact that I've had a relationship? How do I ascend to full Chad status? I guess it is too late for me. I'm just a, a soy face YouTube boy now. Maybe in another life. <laughs> uh, this person actually responds and says, Bro, I do understand you. Y'all are desperate, but the reason you get no chicks is because <gasps> you hate them. <laughs> that seems pretty simple. Why didn't I ever try explaining it this way? But, of course, Mr. Cell continues on with his own line of logic, saying, Women are attracted to bullies, but I don't get dates because I hate them. <laughs> Certainly not because I'm five foot four and ugly. And then he links a Marie Claire article. <laughs> uh, which is so closely related to the cosmopolitan joke that I made earlier that I just, I, I can hardly get a grip on it. The title of the article implies cheating with somebody that, uh, assaulted this woman. But honestly, I wouldn't put too much stock in anything that that rag magazine writes, you know? <laughs> they're, they're just trying to get you to buy it, click it, read it. And it seems to be working. <laughs> uh, Cell says, This is who we hate! 
How can you even blame us when you see modern women, <laughs> which doesn't have any morals because feminism made them turn into wild animals? Ah, yes. When in doubt, blame feminism. That's nebulous enough to stick, isn't it? <laughs> uh, then he links the conversation why women, including feminists, are still attracted to benevolently sexist men. I think they're talking about me. <laughs> Although, man, my wife enjoys when a man is a man. I think it's the benevolent part that he's missing out on. <laughs> he's just full of hate. He can't even be benevolent to himself. Just imagine a guy will beat up girl's boyfriend, and she will lose all of her interest to him. Yeah, he read that in a webcomic one time. It totally happened. <laughs> uh, like, you've never heard of a, a girl nursing a, a man's wounds? If you stand up and defend her honor, even if you get your ass kicked, uh, she'll respect you more for it. She'll respect you double plus more if you win, but sometimes that's just not really an option. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he also links Eyes Little Scene video. I don't know what that is. Watch this video and look at girl. I won't blame the guy if he ended his girlfriend, as I don't blame any shooters out of ER. He was just an idiot. I mean, yeah, we arrive at the same conclusion, but somehow for completely different reasons, I presume. Luckily, your opinion doesn't hold much water for me. You're learning all of these things through web articles and like videos on shady websites. I think I'm good, dude. I think the way that I'm living is a lot happier than the way that you're living. So even if I'm completely wrong, I'm just going to continue on my merry way. <laughs> Thank you so much for trying to convert me to your way of thinking. But I don't think I really want to do that. He's like, come on, just lay down and rot. <laughs> Doesn't look fun. Not gonna do it. Anyway, next one. Just more short sell things. <laughs> I made a post on r slash short guys. I thought that subreddit was meant to discuss disadvantages of height. I mean, I don't know. Why can't it be for short kings to pump themselves up? Figuratively. Literally, I would hope that they're comfortable within their own skins, but seems to happen less and less these days for everyone. <laughs> Uh, but OP says, disadvantages of being short, 175 centimeters. I must admit, it's always been frustrating. I was almost never picked, and it was immensely frustrating. Yeah, but was it frustrating, though? Did you find it frustrating? <laughs> uh, I love people that repeat the same word in, like, the, the sentence after. Pick up a thesaurus, for God's sake. <laughs> uh, my father's 180 centimeters, and he was picked. And did much better than I've done. I was always pushed aside for taller men. They were much more popular, and no matter what I did, they would always get picked in front of me. It's not my fault that my genes didn't make me taller. It's always been frustrating being a short goalkeeper in football. Yeah, that's what it really is, huh? I can't possibly jump higher. I can't possibly try to improve myself to find somebody who's, who's willing to accept me and love me for who I am. Nope, it's all over because of my height. Even though your father is living proof, <laughs> 180 centimeters is fine. For our American friends, 180 centimeters, about 5'9". Average height, if I do recall correctly. But of course, it can't just be a, a post about one guy's struggles. Now it has to turn into the woe is me Olympics. <laughs> the cell comes in and says, Average guys thinking that they're short problems. I'm married, but I didn't get picked for this sport because I'm not popular enough. XD, XD. Actual short guy problems. I've never held anyone's hand or have had romantic experiences in my life. I've always been bullied all my life. Life is not worth living. Goodbye, cruel world. And yet, here you sit, <laughs> on your great fat ass, not having any romantic experiences at all. How do you expect it to happen if you're terminally online? Pick up a hobby or something. Your height has nothing to do with it. If you put yourself out there enough, eventually you'll find somebody you vibe with. It's like the laws of nature. If you're super awkward, then yeah, go practice up. Make small talk at the gas station or at the 7-Eleven, you know? Takes a little bit of work, but really, yeah, it's not even that much work. <laughs> uh, original OP says, oh, 
I wasn't about popularity. Me being a short goalkeeper gave me disadvantages when going after the balls being crossed in from the side. Well, but does the subreddit not say all aspects of life? I think what pisses off people the most is listing your height, lol. Yeah, sure. You're people, I guess. You're well within your right to be pissed off, and I'm also well within my right to completely ignore that fact. Somebody else chimes in and says, You're not short if you're 175 centimeters. OP says, I don't know. I'm short for a goalkeeper. <laughs> GTFO! <laughs> uh, that's right, you gotta be sub five foot to come in here. <laughs> OP says, isn't this a subreddit to discuss aspects of height? I'm a short goalkeeper. That's a fact. R slash short is your place. I mean, I'm pretty sure I have access to the free and open internet just like you. I mean, not the real free and open internet, but this one that we experience daily. <laughs> OP says, and I quote, R slash short guys is primarily a space for short men to discuss all aspects of height, heightism, and how it affects us in all areas of life. Please explain to me where my post falls outside this description. Are well, you really fighting this battle, OP? I think the best advice I have for you here is to just let them wallow in their misery. So what? <laughs> uh, sorry you guys had a bad time. Obviously you don't want to participate in any discourse. So I bid you adieu. Except I wouldn't even say that. I'd just ghost the whole thread. <laughs> uh, uh, five foot seven is not the end of the world. <laughs> sure, there are taller men, but you're the same height or taller than most women. So I'm sorry to say, but at this point, it's a skill issue. Because if you make good money and have a gym bod, five seven's not that bad. I'm pretty sure it's 5'9". That makes it even worse. Actually better for him. So, okay, just give me a number. How short do you need to be to participate in r slash short guys? I'm gonna go in there and tell everybody I'm three feet tall. And I'm more oppressed than all of the rest of you. <laughs> because I'm three feet tall. <laughs> uh, you don't know what it's like for me. You don't know my pain. I've seen some really short dudes get after it. This is basically just endlessly a skill issue for everybody involved here. You're making up excuses for your own failure. Uh, OP's last word says, oh, I didn't talk about women. I've been married for almost a year and a half. I talked about being a goalie. Yeah, OP, you just out here trying way too hard, honestly. I mean, so are they. But at a certain point, you have to see what the context is and just be like, oh, all right, bye. <laughs> It's not a battle worth fighting, I guarantee it. Although it is hilarious to see everybody competing for like, who's the shortest? Who has it the hardest? <laughs> uh, adorable. So I guess also people aren't supposed to age, according to Andrew Anglin over on Twitter. <laughs> Dear women, I'm only trying to help. None of your professional or personal accomplishments matter to men. I mean, I care quite deeply. Otherwise, you're just looking at a hollow husk of a human being. Yeah, they're easy on the eyes, and then... <laughs> there's nothing beneath the surface. Here today, gone tomorrow. And then he's got a couple of them Harry Potter actresses, and it's a then and now type of scenario. Which, yeah, people age. Essentially, what you're telling me here is that you're attracted to children, primarily. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sus. <laughs> yeah, these are what actual women look like. If either of the now pictures came up to Andrew and said, Hey, you want to go up to my room? He would jump at the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Most men would. You just gas yourself up on Twitter for no reason. Stop it. Take a break. Go touch a little bit of grass. It's good for you, you know? Whatever, weirdo. I gotta move along. <laughs> oh no, guys, it's finally over for this incel. He can't get success from dating apps, which are statistically the worst place to find a girlfriend. 
Yeah, but it's the only way that he can do it without having to leave his house, so <laughs> you gotta roll those dice. And then when it doesn't work, you know, throw in the towel forever. No big deal. <laughs> Uh, he says, it's finally over. I'm early, late 20s. What? <laughs> uh, uh, first sentence, relatively innocuous, but yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense. I don't know if he was going to lie about being early 20s or if he means that he's like just into his late 20s, like 26. <laughs> uh, I'm very confused already. But please, continue. This past weekend, I've seriously optimized my dating profile as much as possible. Wow, that took you all weekend, huh? <laughs> Sounds like you had a big one planned. Outside of getting ripped abs or something, which is impossible at my age. It doesn't become really impossible to like 36, but even then, you work hard enough, you can make it happen. You just don't really want it, is what it is. I even posted one of those pics to Instagram, and one of my friends said, oh, Wowzer, you look good. <laughs> uh, you think it was a female friend? Because I don't. Just a couple of bros broing out, you know? Trying to gas each other up a little bit. <laughs> there was no change in online dating results. Nothing. Nata. N-A-T-T-A? I think it's N-A-D-A. -A. You know, like Spanish for, for nothing or something? Today for the first time, it's unironically over. Yeah, no Tinder girlfriend. <laughs> I give up. Well, you didn't even really try. Nope, I give up. <laughs> hey, I was hoping over these past few years, this phase would just be a phase that I could get out of it and get my stuff together, make friends, and find someone. Yeah, just as soon as I'm out of this phase. <laughs> uh, it's not a phase. It's your life. And it's passing you by. You just sit there with your thumb and your butt. You're just like, ah, oh, I really should get it together eventually. But I'm still in the phase. <laughs> uh, Incel says, nope, it's game over. I have literally done everything possible besides social circle maxing. But it's impossible to do that at my age. Yeah, social circle maxing is, is a lot like getting abs. Super impossible for as long as you're unwilling to put in any of the legwork. 26 is a, is a great age to make friends. I should probably also point out that social circle maxing is a really weird way to say, yeah, making friends. <laughs> Uh, every time I put myself out there somewhere, they all think I'm fucking weird for being such a loner at my age. I mean, is that how you introduce yourself? <laughs> uh, I don't have any friends. Want to be my friend? Ew. No. Why don't you try, hey, what's going on? You guys having a good night? Something like that. Can I buy you a drink? That at least buy you like five minutes to try and get to know these people. But whatever, like I said, easier to give up, <laughs> and he says as much. It's night out, the light is gone, and eternal darkness awaits. Mm. Pathetic. You really did nothing at all. You sat home, <laughs> you, you rearranged your Tinder profile, and you're like, yeah, this is, this is surely gonna work. Why don't you just go out and meet some people, you know? Don't think so much about the relationship part. Just go be a normal dude for a little while and, and see if that doesn't work out for you a little bit better. I guarantee that it will, and you won't believe me until you try it. So, <laughs> please try it. Leave those Tinder girls alone. Nothing good happens over there, all right? Oh my God, this one is the best one of the video by far. <laughs> the title is just, wow. And given this thing a once over, yeah, wow is about all I have to say, too. <laughs> I hate women. They're parasitic in nature, shallow and almost evil. They don't like no matter what I do. Not even they don't like you, just don't like in general. <laughs> Everything about no like. You go, you smelly, no like. <laughs> 
Uh, uh, background before I get into this. I'm a 37 year old virgin and I don't know what's wrong with women for them not to like me. I'm above average looking, have an okay job, and am really nice. Now, there's nothing wrong with being a 37 year old virgin as long as you're okay with it. This guy, quite clearly not okay with it, has made it a, a central tenant of his personality, which is basically one of the worst mistakes you can make. <laughs> uh, I also want to say that I doubt he's above average looking. Uh, okay job? Yeah, that's just okay. <laughs> you perform a function in society like everybody else. You should be rewarded! Yeah, the, the paycheck, that's, that's the reward. Now go give it to your landlord. <laughs> Uh, or the Red X over on Patreon. <laughs> uh, uh, really nice, also citation needed. Nice people don't tell you they're nice, they just demonstrate. Anyway, he continues, While on the bus to work, a pretty girl, maybe 18, around 5'5", five five, and a little underweight sits next to me. Yeah, probably everybody's underweight compared to you. You really gonna make a run at, at an 18 year old girl as a 37 year old tub of shit? <laughs> it's not gonna go well. Did you shower today? Have you brushed your teeth this week? Please just leave her alone. <laughs> I don't think there was any more seats. However, there was plenty of standing space, so I assumed that she was attracted to me. <laughs> You make an ass of you and me! Uh, or at least somewhat interested in me. Wow, you are reading really deep into that. <laughs> I mean, mine was the only seat available, but yeah, also probably she wants to bang me. <laughs> uh, it's quite a leap in logic, oh, okay. My long hair covers my eyes, so was able to subtly eavesdrop on her text messages. Can you eavesdrop on text messages? I thought it was more of a hearing thing, but I guess kind of same difference, okay. She was talking to her friend about a nearby band they were going to see later that night. Oh, super. And so the stalking begins. <laughs> I put two and two together and figured she wanted me to know about this. Otherwise, why would she have sat next to me and then conveniently basically told me where she was going that night? <laughs> so I took the hint and played along with her game. <laughs> you are fucking delusional. What are you talking about? This person is clearly out of his mind. These are the kind of thoughts a psychotic person has. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I researched the band they were talking about and decided tonight will be the night that I spread my seed. <laughs> I traveled 500 miles to give you my seed. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I get off work slightly early for a haircut and get myself looking good. I mean, that's a good first step. Did you bathe? <laughs> Haircut's great, but, but shower's most important. After arriving just in time, I spotted my little bus girl with her friends. Little bus girl. <laughs> You don't even know her name! <laughs> I knew it would be weird to introduce myself in front of her friends, so I waited till she was alone, coming back from the toilet. Hey, it's me, the, the guy from the bus. <laughs> See, this is why women always need to go to the potty together. Protection. Pack tactics. <laughs> She just pretended to be confused. Huh? And I chuckled. <laughs> I know girls like to play hard to get. Uh, you sat next to me earlier and you, I saw you were going to this band on your phone. Uh, I'm sure you missed me, I said, in a flirtatious time with a mischievous grin to match. 
This is the stuff of nightmares. I hope to God this is a fan fiction. There was no class, no subtlety here. <laughs> Everything I saw was absolutely pathetic. There is no recovering. Just, just pack it in, please. <laughs> she persisted in her act, and not long into conversing, she ran towards her friends, where they tell security the situation. Yeah, <laughs> you've been stalking her. That's not a lie, is it? Can we both agree on that? He's not gonna agree. He's gonna be like, she wanted me to know because she was texting somebody where I could see. How about no, you were the asshole for looking. <laughs> uh, there's like just two or three logic loops that we're just gonna run through infinitely, right? I attempted to explain my side and security, without bothering to listen, kicked me out. <laughs> no refund either. Good. You should have gone to jail. <laughs> Had a restraining order. Let this be a lesson learned. You got off light. Yeah, I'm sick of women. I try so hard and look where it gets me. You do try so hard. Probably a little too hard. <laughs> this is just like way overboard. And I don't know why you don't see that. Probably because it's a fanfic. Please, God, tell me this is creative writing. But it might not be. We've seen it a few times too many. You're all just attention mongers that use us men like we're puppets, and I won't take this any longer. Actions have consequences. Yes, they do. Like you getting kicked out of a club for stalking a woman and not getting a refund. Those kinds of consequences? <laughs> uh, or are you talking about the nebulous threatening consequences because somebody decided that they didn't want to touch your pee pee? They didn't remember you from the bus. This random person they sat next to and probably didn't even acknowledge. Probably purposely turned away from because he was greasy and creepy and breathing real heavy. This is just absolutely unhinged and uh, I think it's a great one to end the video on. So there we go. <laughs> I hope you like, comment, subscribe, friends, if you did enjoy. Join up on the Patreon. I, I said it like three times this video, but for real, it helps out a lot. YouTube channel members also helping out a lot. You can also do a one-time donation to my PayPal, link in the description. Most importantly, I want you to always remember, friends, that you are loved, you are worthy, you definitely, definitely deserve it, and I shall see you in the next one. So until then, bye-bye. Go ahead and cut them open. It's gonna be fine, it's gonna be fine. Where is he? It's just a fact.